Well, hello there. Allow me to welcome you to the Jiangshan Alpine Centre. It is indeed day eight of the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. It's all about the slalom here on day eight, and it's all about the men's events in particular. Visually impaired run one, standing run one, and sitting run one to come. A day in numbers looks a little bit like this. There are 89 men taking part. The oldest is 53. The youngest is just 16 years old. 20 different people have won medals in men's events so far. This is what it looks like here at the venue today. Uh, minus one currently uh, we are expected to get up to a high of around about 13 degrees so the sun is indeed out not a single cloud in the sky you can see the tops of the trees just well, whitening over just with the temperature from this morning but that was Johnson, all white this morning so it's already starting to burn be. away uh, burning their way down the course will be these gentlemen and their guides the men's slalom visually impaired will start us off uh, there are 18 in this event. There are 40 in the men's standing and 31 to come in the men's sitting event. Local skier Huang Ming Yu. A couple of B1 skiers in uh, Zoldbalach, Hungary, and will explain the classifications as we go along as well. But again, another glorious day that we've been greeted to here at the 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. And this is the course that greets the athletes this morning. The Yongshan Slalom starts at 745 metres, uh, drops 200 metres. There are 53 turning gates and Davide Gross has set the course. Chance for the last of the medals. Four competitions down for the guys. This is their last moment of glory. If they haven't got what they wanted from this trip to Korea, then there's no better time than now. The final preparations taking place. As you may know, it is the best event for tickets sold at a Winter Games in a Paralympics ever. And these are the sort of people that have been coming out the stands here have typically been filling up as the days have gone on and all nations seem to be represented whether it be by one or two or by a lot more here's a closer look at the bottom of the course the men's vi athletes will indeed tackle this first off you can see the start gate just about at the back of your shot right at the top they'll come down through the gates and the first of the athletes to be waiting is a man that already has plenty of success here in Pyeongchang marrying that up with success and medals that he's had in previous games as well 2010 a couple of bronzes just the silver in Sochi but Hareos has already got bronze in the Super G, and then won the Super Combined as well. So he's already one better off, and in his third games has picked up his first gold of a Paralympic Games. Hard to believe the games are almost over. At the end of these two runs, they will be for these gentlemen. A reminder of the rules that uh, if you fail to finish the first run, you are out. And you don't appear again later on. So the start of day eight, and we get underway with Miroslav Hreos and Maros Hudik, who is the guide in the very bright colours here this morning. The uh, sun at the top of that bank really causing us some issues but uh, it's at the back of the skiers so they won't mind the guide's job is that of the guide they are talking through their communication headsets and bringing down the athletes and Hareos, the first of the morning to try and tackle the uh, 53 gates 
it's not going badly at all. Back to timing is because all of these athletes are classified. And the uh, stopwatch, if you like, is manipulated in accordance with the rules. Each athlete's classification done on stringent testing and stretching for the line. Areas comes down in a time of 47.96. The two runs are combined. Is that part of a winning Tucson? Bruno Morgenfurt is the oldest man in the competition. He's 53 years old now. Being brought down by Christoph Gmeiner. And just because he's the oldest doesn't mean he's the most experienced. The uh, World Cup campaign just gone was his first major campaign. Hasn't competed at a major event until now and he's picked the biggest stage of them all to do so diagnosed in 2005 with his visual impairment diagnosed with multiple sclerosis back in 1993 if you meet Gerno you understand his attitude he's never just sat around not with multiple sclerosis and not with a visual impairment either and here he is racing down the mountain here in Pyeongchang, setting his time, which is 50.31 here in his opening run. Is that competitive enough for Nurgenfurt's first medal? Is a little shake of the head, which would suggest otherwise. Slovakia are the team with the most medals so far in the men's section, uh, joint with France. And uh, Jakub Krako is one of those that has contributed to that list. Second in the downhill. Winner of the Super G. And Silver in the giant slalom. Three of the five for Slovakia have come to Krako. A, a good guy in Branislav Brosman. They seem to have a real good understanding. And the 27 year old batting away the gate poles. Technically more difficult event is the slalom. And the instructions that come through those Bluetooth headsets from the guides have to be much more precise and quicker as you are turning. Someone with a visual impairment in and out. 49.07 puts Krako in second. But we're only three of 18 down. Now, Matthias Kresel. Waiting for his opportunity to run here on day eight. Kresel with Ogazinska as the guide. Maria, Anna Ogazinska, sorry, and Mateusz Kresel from Poland. Just 26, it's Kresel. And again, just coming out of the sunshine at the back of him. As he makes his descent. Maybe into the record books, maybe just setting a time that pushes the rest of the field on. Nothing that pains to mention that not all of these athletes, certainly at Paralympic level, come to achieve medals. Their achievements are perhaps predetermined by something else before even being here can be the overachievement for some of them, and across the line comes Kretzel, really pushing at the end there. 4.67 the difference leaves him down in fourth position. 52.63. Oh, Ivan 
Francef representing the Central Paralympic athlete delegation. Francef and his guide, Kirman Agronovsky. Francef is a, a B2 classified skier. That means that uh, the B2 skiers have slightly less visual acuity than a, a B3 but more than a B1 and our first DNF of the morning comes in the form of Ivan Francev just catching the right ski on one of the gate poles and that is enough to dislodge it from his boot and dislodge him from the competition so a disappointment for Ivan Francev, it's a third Paralympics and he's been so close to medals in the past and he's going to leave here without a medal in the slalom. Just coupling the skis back on and these two will make their way down. He's only 26, Francev, so whilst it is his third games, the Young age suggests he's got plenty more opportunities to come in the future. Well, uh, Malik Kobatska waiting on. Okay, okay court clear, sticks at the top. He's one of our two B1 athletes. So, to explain, the B1 athlete has his goggles completely blacked out. As is the rules. Just hear a little feedback from the speaker on the back of his guide's rucksack. Well, they are the instructions you could hear from Maria Zatorikova of Slovakia. She is taking down Marek Kubatska. Now, if you have a normal stopwatch in your hand, this will go longer than 47.96, but the bottom right of your screen will explain that Kubatska's time is uh, manipulated to 58% of the average running stopwatch. So you notice the clock just next to that factored time is indeed moving a lot slower. So Kubatska to level the playing field because his vision is a B1 classified, so he has the least visual acuity of the rest of the field under the stringent tests that are done by the classifiers. They are the rules that he skis within. The guide's job here is so, so difficult. The speaker at the bottom of the rucksack, you can just about make it out on the lower back of Maria. So not only do they have a headset microphone, Kubatska will be listening in to that. It's uh, amplified in volume by the speaker and you are watching, this is the first time you've ever seen para-alpine skiing. You're watching a man at the back who can't see a thing through those goggles. And he is making his way down a very steep 200 metre drop alpine course. All of the respect in the world as he crosses the line, 52-78. And it always seems to happen, but the B1 skiers do get a tremendous round of applause because that is not a skill that I think many of us want to try and undertake. So Kubatska makes it down. 52-78. He is in last place at the moment. This man has done it all in the world of para-alpine skiing. John Santacana Mestegui of Spain. 37 years of age from San Sebastian. And in the very early stages, the experienced Spaniard who may well have just skied his very last race in the sport. There are Hefty rumours that he may not compete beyond Pyeongchang. What he won't compete today is beyond the first round, maybe even beyond the first six or seven gates. He will be distraught about that because he wanted to go out here on a high. Golds in the last two 
or in the uh, three, sorry, previous games. He's picked up a medal here. I think he fancied having another. Talking of winning more. This is Mac Marcou. Looking by his World Cup series and World Championships of recent times. He would have arrived here in Pyeongchang expecting a little more than he's got. He should be happy. But I think he needs to add this one to be somewhere near his own expectations. 20 years old though, Matt Marku, and already in his second Paralympic Games, he got a gold in the giant slalom in Sochi. He's got a gold here in the downhill and had to settle for bronze in the giant slalom this time around. He and Jack Leach have proved formidable this season. Just a little uncomfortable through certain sections is Marku, but he and Leach towards the line, 1.49. Well, it's third fastest so far at the moment. Slovakia have themselves one and two. Canada are now in third. Only three have gone inside 50 seconds. 49-6-1 for the team they call Mac and Jack. Now Valeri Rekosubov. Part of the Little Paralympic athlete delegation. You can see a time of 82%. He fits into the B2 category. He's 45 now. He's uh, Rekosubov. He and his guide, Evgeny Giroyev. Making their way down steadily. Two golds in Sochi, the best they could manage in 2010. In Vancouver was a, an 11th place finish in the giant slalom, but certainly made that look a lot better in Sochi. They've picked up bronze in the super combined, and they're not far outside here, but we saw Marku in a similar position, just inside the second. He then finished 1.6 back. Had to cut you off. Got a little bit more over this bottom section. The weaving skills of Rakoshibov. No, he drops time as well. Uh, third place. So it's Slovakia, Slovakia NPA. At the end of the first nine. Halfway through the 18 that we have. They're in third. got one of each as this man he's got a bronze he's got a silver he's got a gold can Giacomo Bertanoli add to his medal hall it's off balance in the early stages we've had one big contender for a medal go already Bertanoli would be another big name All right at the moment, Fabrizio Casal is the guide. He's only 19, is Giacomo. Already the super combined world champion last time out. Gold here in the giant slalom, so he's got skills in slalom, but he's back by 1.35. This time from Herreos, really starting to look like it could be the one to take him all the way a clean second run for Herreos obviously needed but Agnoli does very well in the bottom half well that's pretty opposite to the last few runs we've had a lot of people have been close to Herreos in the top section but Agnoli has managed to find some speed in the bottom section he needs to marry that up later on but he does split the Slovakian pairing he's into second Time for the United States of America. Come on, let's go! The USA represented by Kevin Burton and Brandon Ashby, the guy. To wear matching kits. While you see a lot of guys wearing high visible jackets and trousers, these uh, guys are more than happy that Brandon only has to wear the 
orange bib that has the letter G on it. 1.51 back for Kevin Burton. Not his first time at a major event, but the last time he was at the Paralympics was as a para biathlon and para cross country skier. He switched it up, prefers the speed these days. But, uh, 35 years of age, trying to achieve a medal in this very final event. He's outside at the moment, he's having a little difficulty here. Former linguist with the US Navy. Yeah, yeah, 6.22, a little tongue tied with the course, it would seem. Kevin Burton has smiled his way through most of his Paralympic experience. I'm sure his kids, you and Imogen, are watching on. So two out so far. The rest have made it to the bottom. This is athlete number 12. Starting is Patrick Jensen for Australia. Lara Falk is the guide, the lady at the front. Bright orange top giving Patrick some additional support in terms of being guided. Again, a lot of these athletes' visual impairments will vary. Their levels of vision will vary. The sunshine on the snow will bother some of them more than others when it's bright. Some of the skiers can't see the contours and Patrick Jensen has straddled one of the poles. There was a yelp as soon as he did it. He let out a sigh and he goes off to the side because Jensen's day, Jensen's Paralympics are done. Got a feel for the athletes when they DNF to this part of the sport and uh, get something wrong and you go. Like a Korean athlete, Huang Min Gyu. And uh, Yu Jia Hyung, the guide. Big slide from uh, you there. Just looking back, and guide's job not an enviable one. They, uh, they have to be able to ski proficiently themselves, but equally they're looking back and talking about what's in front at the same time. They have to make sure their athlete is safe. Good bit of pace through that section from Huang. The seventh place at the World Championships last year. He's uh, well off the pace in this opening time section. 6.35 down. He has competed in power athletics for his nation as well. In towards the line then. Big cheer from the stands as always. The uh, homegrown athletes have been greeted very nicely here at the Yongshan Alpine Centre. It's 55-9-2, and that only leaves him in last place for now. Here's your leader. Sadly, you get no medals for your first run, but it goes a long way to securing them after the second. Now here's a likeable pairing. This is uh, Damir Mizdrak, who's uh, never without a smile. And this guy, Luka Debeljak. Uh, more than just a performance. These pair, it's uh, about selling the sport to their country, men and women. Mizdrak gets better with each performance, that is for sure. Had goals during the World Cup to close the gap. 
As I mentioned before in commentary, uh, a lot of these guys, it's not about the gold, silver and bronze. Some of them want to break the top ten, others just don't want to be the last in the pile. It shows progression, Mizrak, ten and odd seconds back. Look at constantly telling him where he needs to be. Big slide there from Damir Mizrak, but uh, he's on course to finish run number one. Encouraged to get across the line, and he does. 13.76 seconds back. Damir Mizrak. And look at the Beljak. Yeah, across the line. Just 26 is Damir, so plenty of time to keep improving. Yeah, time for another of our B1 skiers. So this is uh, Zork Baloch. And uh, Bense Boxy. Again, B1 skiers with uh, little or no vision and light acuity, the ability to see light. So, uh, oh, really wide, really wide from Salt Ballock. And he's all manner of struggling here. I'm not sure he's going to manage it. He is brilliant. The guiding there. Oh, and he's wrapped up in the pole. And that's the end of the day for the Hungarian. Well, I was just about to say, remember, these guys cannot see a thing out of their goggles. Whilst their impairment is tested and they're classified to make sure everything is fair. If you are going to be classified as a B1 skier, your goggles are then blacked out. So there is nothing coming through for uh, sort of Balot to base it against and just at a matter of six or seven inches of the front right of his ski blade, catching the pole as he tries to turn onto his right side. And your Paralympics can be ended just like that. Patrick Hefmer. Czech Republic represented by Hetmer and Miroslav Makala. Four athletes have failed to finish so far from the opening 15. 15 of 18 is Hetmer. 35 years old from uh, Kisen. Again, another B2 classified skier. He's a teacher. And he's not here showing us what it's to do. Makala, all the way in front for a guide. Each of the skiers and guide partnerships are very different. Some like their skiers to be closer. They've closed up a little bit here. Others, certainly in the uh, downhill races, can be very far ahead. You tend to find they stay in close proximity through the slalom courses. And you just see the guide's job, not easy at all. Miroslav Makalo is constantly looking back and across the line comes Hetma. 9.65 is the difference. He's uh, in the second to last place. Again, his achievement may just be getting two runs under his belt here. He uh, took the public flags waving away. Second of the two athletes from the Czech Republic to come. This is Tadeusz Chris and uh, Radim Nevely. Best time in the morning so far, 47.96. Chris Hetma didn't feature on the World Cup circuit. The Czech team decided their budget could only stretch to being here, so the practice has all been done for the majority of them 
away from the circuit. Mean there is the potential for a surprise, but we're not overly expectant of that. Cavios' time should be the one that leads him through to the next stage quite happily in front. Ten seconds the difference for Chris. It's 22. This is uh, a huge moment for him. He's, uh, well, not managed to capitalise on this huge moment. He's gone down on his first run. And as stated before, if you don't finish the first run, you don't get chance for the second. Just into this right here. And again, just a matter of inches at the front of the ski can be all it takes. And it sends uh, the Deus spiralling down the mountain. And uh, he's obviously fine. He and uh, Radim will ski off. And they're our leaders. Maros Sudik, the guide. Miroslav Hareos. And... Uh, it's uh, a long way from winning gold just yet, but they are nearly a second quicker than the rest. Final athlete in the men's VI competition, and athlete number 18 on the list is Sean Pianta. 28 years old at the end of the World Cup. He's had a birthday since then. And that's not the present he was looking for on the last day. The 29-year-old goes down, and he and Jeremy Sullivan could be done for the day much earlier than they would have wanted. Spinning into this right gate post again, just a matter of inches can cost you, and this time it's because the ski is the wrong side of the gate altogether. And uh, somewhere in that snow drift there's an Australian there he is oh, it's uh, quite crumbly on the mountain but we've worked our way through the first event of day number eight the men's visually impaired ends with Miroslav Hereos at the top 47.96 Batagnoli 48, 85, and Jakub Krako is in third. So it's looking good for Slovakia. They have five medals in the men's category overall so far. And they make it seven from just the VI events. Men's slalom standing event now. The largest field of the men's events on day number eight of the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. We'll start with Thomas Grocha, Alexa Bugayev, and Adam Hall. Those will be the top three. And, uh, certainly, Bugayev and Adam Hall have medaled. We'll be looking to repeat that and then a whole list of athletes again with different targets looking down the bottom end here Merit Cegic representing Turkey alone Oje Puig Davi representing Andorra alone James Whitley for Great Britain Iceland have a singular athlete, so too to Sweden, so too to Finland. The varying differences of the men's standing event. There are indeed 40 athletes to come in this. The standing event can include single leg skiers. Skiers using two legs, but both on prosthetics. Single or no arm skiers using neither pole. Skiers can use outriggers instead of poles, which is about what you're going to see with our first athlete, Thomas Grocha. Those outriggers are the devices in either hand. There's a, a flip switch. You see that piece of cord maybe just coming from the handle if you look closely in the sunlight there. Uh, when you pull that string, it flips the mini blade. He's uh, currently in the up position, but it flips the mini blade down. 
And those skiers can then use that to assist them with their balance and direction. Single leg skier, Thomas Grocha, will be first to lead us away from the 40. Just 24 years old. In a second games. So Thomas Grocha starts the men's standing event. The benchmark will be set. Oh, from the first run out. It'll be interesting to see if he's classed as missing a gate there, but he's carrying on. Look up. Down he goes. Well, he is an athlete that leans quite far forward, is Thomas Grocker. And on this occasion, gravity is not his friend. Just leaning a little bit too much. The double parallel You see here, he's trying to lean into his right side. And uh, he just catches the gate all wrong. And it doesn't help him with the balance. And it doesn't help him complete the course. Mutual Paralympic athletes have taken three medals in the men's events. It looks like Bagayev has contributed to the MPA's medal hall. He is a Paralympian with lots of success and he would like to finish his time here with even more. He's just 20. Got two golds, the slalom and the super combined, so he is the defending champion of this event. He's already won the super combined to hold on to that title. This will be the one that people will be watching on, and the defending champion is gone. It is as simple as miss a gate and miss out, and we say goodbye to Bagayev. Well, dramatic start to the men's standing. The first athlete falls, and then so too does the defending champion. He knew straight away. Didn't try and continue. He absolutely knew straight away. And the winner of the slalom in Sochi is gone. Bronze in the super combined. And Adam Hall add to that bronze. 30 years old from Dunedin. The first two athletes on this course have gone. I'm sure wife Elitza is screaming as he comes down. A former representative of the USA in Torino and Vancouver, his wife. I can only but guess they met during competition. Competition is pretty much their life, after all. Adam Hall looking for another medal on the slopes of Pyeongchang. I'm sure Alpine Centre has been kind to some. Will it be kind to Adam Hall? The reigning champion went just a little bit further up that slope than we've just seen Hall come past, so he's one stage better off, and he's the first to get across the line. Desperately dipping like a 100 meter runner. Get across that line. 48 69 for Adam Hall. He at least gets a second chance to come down in front of friends and family. Hard to tell from the body language if he's happy. He is a man that hasn't been happy all season. Jeffrey Stutt from the Netherlands. Double bronze medal winner at the World Championships in downhill and Super G. So this isn't somewhere we expect Jeffrey to uh, excel in. But uh, spoke to his mum and his sister a couple of days ago. And we were talking about how tough he has found this year to be. But his coach 
insists he's going in the right direction at the moment. He's keeping it between the gates, and that's the direction he needs. Stroop. Outside of Hall's time, early doors. DNF. A couple of World Cup finals ago in this slalom. DNF. The World Championships in the slalom. So currently stood. Oh, he's done it again. He just seems to get to a point. And the point is too far. Well, plenty of flags waving for Jeffrey Stutt at the bottom as he makes an uh, unceremonious exit from the course. He will be livid. And that's a knockout blow for the gate post as well. There are no fines in uh, para alpine skiing. But uh, Jeffrey Stutt has caught himself up in the uh, netting on the outside of the course. Not missing any of the posts today, unfortunately, for Jeffrey Stutt. Mitch Corley of Australia will have come to Pyeongchang thinking that this was a time he could indeed win the Paralympic medal. He got a world gold last year and there was a smile as wide as the course on his face. This is his third attempt at the Paralympic Games. He's 26, so it's not exactly old. And he's flying here. The world champion at Super Combined is inside Adam Hall. So the Australia-New Zealand thing never lets us down, does it? Really driving into each of the turns. And he tucks himself in. Oh, 48-69. Well, they're next door to each other. And now they have to share the podium. Exactly the same time as Adam Hall. It's a good job we've got a second run, isn't it? <laughs> Top at the moment, both Australia and New Zealand. Get it, driver. Come on, Bob. Let's go, Kirk. Imagine. First gate, Kirk. Let's get it. Canada next up. Can they affect on, the standings? Go, go, go. Kirk Sean Steed. For a 24 year old. Originally from Edmonton, now resides in Spruce Grove, Alberta. Oh, just having to drive this turn, and he can't make it. And the course is racking up the victims here in the first run. It is punishing. And, uh, well, Kirk Shornstein. Trying to punish the course, but there's nothing he can do here. He's gone really wide. Tries to correct this right, and there's no chance he's getting back inside. And there's the moment he knows it. Sean Steen goes, and we've only had two from six so far. Make it to the bottom. Go, J -Mo, come on, yeah, J -Mo. come on. Get this, bud. James Stanton. Come on, come on, come on. Two final runs of his career. He's retiring at the end of these games. Concentrating on his new job on Wall Street. Seems fair to me. I say his final two runs. He's got to do what four others in front of him haven't managed and get down the first one at least. He's not only getting down, he's inside the times here. Well, Gawley was quick over the opening section and lost out at the bottom to come level with Hall. What has Jamie Stanton got? He's still ahead. Can the United States of America top the leaderboard going into the second run? There's loads of athletes still to come, mind you. Oh, 0.18. We have a new leader and his name is Jamie Stanton. Second Paralympics for Stanton, never medalled. Can he go out in the biggest possible way? Thomas Walsh then just 23. From uh, Vale, Colorado. 
We'll be looking for anything other than a rocky performance here on day eight. Skis for the Aspen Valley Ski and Snowboard Club. And he's within a second. Which means at the moment he would be last, but only four, well, only three have completed. He would be the fourth. Stanton, smooth enough, that's for sure. He's closed the gap, 0.46 then. Has he got a speedy bottom half? This is the intricate section towards the finish. Oh, 0.82. This is better. We're getting people across the line for a start. The four to finish so far are less than a second apart. Tell me this isn't exciting. Tell me you're not enjoying this. Santeri Kivari. I've said it to enough people within the skiing fraternity that Santeri Kivari of Finland could well cause a surprise here in Pyeongchang. It hasn't happened yet. He's just 17. And there were things about him during the World Cup that a lot of people sat up and took notice of just the use of the singular arm and ski pole the right arm tucked within the bib some people ask if that's allowed you can't tie a knot in the bib i have seen a disqualification for that putting your arm inside is perfectly okay he's not doing anything with it due to his impairment so he just likes to keep it out of the way keep it 0.69 we are really hotting up as a contest here. Kivari clattering the, through that one. Into the bottom section then. This last few sets of weaving needs to be quick. 1.10. Well, 49.61. Everybody's inside 50 so far. Kivari slowed himself fractionally with that big clash. Around about halfway. The fin isn't finished though. Thomas Fiel. Oh, Switzerland. 31 years old now is Fiel. Cerebral palsy affects him on the right side. He's uh, desperate to compete in his home world championships, which will take place in 2019. 0.84 we start. Let's have a look at the main split in a moment around about 34 seconds you want to be coming in 34 5 4 for stanton can thomas feel get somewhere near that again just a couple of slow sections means that feel so far is the slowest of our athletes really grinding the corners out and, uh, like anything the more snow you see come up the slower that means he's going because he's really digging in but Still crossing the line, 51-47 for the 31-year-old Swiss athlete. And he's not happy about it. Not at all. Now another that's caused a few surprises on the World Cup circuit. Came away with a bronze just before the turn of the year. Didn't see him at all the events after that, in the early part of 2018. And when we did see him, didn't quite seem as on the ball as he was in Kutai. Lindstrom, nonetheless, still a, another that's just 17. Time is on his side. Had a very poor World Championships. Thought the bronze at the World Cup that I would spur him on and kickstart. But uh, just having a few issues. He's not always had the optimum amount of time to train. Very close to straddling that. Gained a moment ago. He's all out of shape here as well. And this won't be the competitive time that Aaron Lindstrom would have wanted. And in fact, just lunging and nearly falling across the line. Well, it's uh, a difference of 3.21. A huge Swiss, uh, Swedish flag, sorry, on the front that says Aaron. There it is. You'd have to hope that's his family. 
coming out to see him in his last event of Pyeongchang. Alexander Alyabayev. Alyabayev, another of our NPA athletes, the neutral Paralympic athlete delegation. It's fairly big. 28 year old Alyabayev. Got his final competition underway. Big slide out there. First checkpoint he's behind, as most people have been. Thirty-four, fifty-four through this next section. Al Yabayev never really looks smooth in his runs, but 1.42 isn't insurmountable. 28-year-old from Dimitrov, crossing the line. 1.86 is the difference. Puts him into sixth position for now. Only three have been outside of 50 seconds, he joins that club. James Whitley. Whitley, unable to use a ski pole in either hand due to his impairment. It's a high level of French, as 20 year old James. So keen swimmer, loves his Formula One, his need for speed is not just confined to coming down a mountain on skis, he likes watching it as well. Stop me if you've heard this one, but he is the grandson of former Northern Ireland Prime Minister James Chichester Clark. There you go. That's one for the dinner table later. Can Whitley give us a surprise? 48-51 has gone though. Whitley tucking in as tight as he can. He's 4.10 back, which puts him in ninth for now. He acknowledges the Brits that have come out to support him at the bottom of the run. Arthur Balche has been in great form. It's uh, silver three days in a row. Giant slalom caught him out, but uh, picked up the silver in the downhill, the super G and the super combined. So Arthur Balche would agree when I say. This is a tremendous Paralympic debut. The only issue he might have with that statement is he is a double world champion. So I'm sure he came here with aspirations of gold of his own, but at 17, you think you can win everything and he is in front. 0 0.03 and a large French contingent at the bottom are making noise. He's just got a little out of shape. A moment ago, that might cost 0 0.03, doesn't take long. You could sneeze and lose that. Across the line he comes, and in fact he has 0 0.03 the other way. So he goes second, a position that he's used to being in. But one little mistake can cost you six one hundred. And Balche went from in front to behind in the blink of an eye. Well, he's happy because it is potentially another medal performance. Can he close that gap? There's nothing in that, is there? 48-5, one place, 48-5-4. Now, Martin Wurz of Austria. Martin is uh, 24 years old, oh, very wide. A similar area to where we lost Kirk Shaunstein earlier in the competition. Hasn't been a DNF for a little while. But Martin Wurtz certainly throwing himself into it and causing a, a drama or two in his run. Second games for Wurtz. Driving into the turns towards the bottom section then. Four or five to come. That's the last one. 
Very middle of the road, 50.45 leaves him in eighth position at present. The four DNFs so far, we've had 15 of our 40. This is number 16 to go. Bib, number 34, belongs to Hiraku Misawa. Japan have a chance here in the slalom with their single leg skier Hiraku Misawa. 30 years old. Comes from uh, Matsumoto in Japan. He actually serves on the board of directors for the Japanese Para Ski Foundation. And sadly for him, he's not going to be on board when we go into the second run. It's our fifth DNF. And one of the issues for the guys using the outriggers is if you get your arm in the wrong position as you try and go through the gate, it can leave you very seriously off balance. And uh, well, a huge spray signifies a faller. And this faller this time is Masawa. And here's a guy that has skied in several Paralympic Games. But there's a large gap between 98 and 2010. He won medals in the downhill at 2010, a silver, and at the giant slalom in 1998. The uh, the way the competition is spread out now, much different to how it was back in 98. Two classifications, much more streamlined. Michael Brugger also went to Sochi, two fifth place finishers. Oh, and it's not Brugger's day. It's all the body language as he came into the right turn and uh, up he came straight away. His racing stance changed to an annoyed stance. And he takes it out on the advertising hoarding at the side. Just here. He knew. And again, just a matter of inches to the left of that gate post. And he gets to carry on. But Michael Bluga, it's a big guy. Come on, Braden. Braden Luscombe. Got this. In Canada. Ready? Oh, strong, baby. Let's, Let's go, get Braden. one. Let's Come go, Braden. One of the coaches shouted, you've got this. 64, Braden Luscombe left the start gate. Let's see what Braden Luscombe has indeed got. On here, the Canadian spilling out of the back of his helmet. The 25-year-old slides down the side. And he's past the gate post and out. This course really claiming casualties. That's number seven not to finish. And we've already had 17. Again, you just see, just trying to shift the body weight all in the upper part of the body, trying to get it turned to the right. And the ski just went from underneath him and he slides out on the final day of competition for the men. So, up in France. 33 years old now, Martin. Heartbreak again as he came fourth earlier in the week. This is the same position he keeps coming in. When it comes to major events, he missed out on a medal in Sochi, fourth of the giant slalom. He's been fourth in the world championships on occasions. He's done it here in Pyeongchang as well. He must be, must be sick of the sight of the number four. Well, that's it. Again, no use of ski poles due to his impairment. He was born with underdeveloped upper and lower limbs. That's his ability on a mountain far outweighs his impairment. 
that's it. Again, having to use all of his body strength and balance to get through the course. Jamie Stanton's time, 48.51, stays intact. 5.45 is the difference from the Slovakian. It's still USA, France, and Australia at the top at the moment. New Zealand and Australia, should I say. Point 18 separates the top four. Less than a second separates the top five. What a second run we can already look forward to. Got to get through the first one first, haven't we? This is Jordan Brossan. Young French skier, he's only 24 still. Part of a very talented French para alpine skiing team. He's just got caught up a little in the top section and that's really slowed him down and it's hard work from here to get anywhere near Jamie Stanton. But Brossan won't stop trying. Above the left knee amputation, he's also heavily impaired in his left shoulder as well. He debuted four years ago at the World Cup in Landgraf. Abosan, well, he's 8.10 seconds back, 56.52. And again, the French are up on their feet in the stands here of Junction's Alpine Centre. famous name and uh, I'm sure those of you with the skiing knowledge don't need me to tell you that Robin Kush is indeed the nephew of Didier Kush a uh, brilliant able-bodied skier and medalist from the Nagano 98 Winter Olympics well the uh, Knowledge, I'm sure, has been imparted on Robin. And he's just caught the edge of his ski, which has uh, gone on a long old journey without him. But uh, Robin sliding to a halt. He's uh, giving the impression of someone that's OK. One of the course guides takes a tumble as well. So conditions aren't that easy, even when you're not trying to go in and out of the gate posts. Robin's runaway ski reunited. But that is the end of the 19-year-old's time from uh, Neuchâtel in Switzerland. A little look back at where it all goes wrong. He just clatters the two skis together. And that won't have helped him. He wouldn't have meant that, of course. But as he's made the turn, his left ski bounces off his right. And that collision means that it goes the wrong side of the gate. Well, innocuous is the word. Unfortunate is the outcome. And we slide into our next competitor at the top in a few moments' time. At eight DNFs now. And we are only 21 athletes down. So uh, it's a high percentage. This is Niko Priancic, the Austrian. He's had some spills and thrills out here on the Zhongxian Alpine Centre courses. And it could be another. It is. Well, Priancic is one of those that you know is going to throw everything into it. He just has to try and combine it with some composure because that's cost him again. Had a big stack in one of the downhill events earlier. This one's less dramatic, but he's just digging in and falling back a little. And that's just meant that he can't claw back that red post there. And he's the wrong side. And he gets three letters against his name. But nobody wants the DNF.
Nine. Fails to finish. John T. O'Callaghan, sports mad, is this young man. An absolute pleasure to chat with. Away from the piste. How can he improve here at Pyeongchang? Wouldn't suggest that he is a, a name... But Jamie Stanton will be scared. Oh, but no, oh, Callahan's down as well. And we're into double digits for DNFs. And the NFL fan and Aussie Rules cricket fan looks on longingly downwards and looks back to see where it's all gone wrong. It is very crumbly, you see. The snow, quite easy to uh, move apart. He just slips below. That one, he goes down, so that's to do it for sliding Johnson. out for on day eight is John T. <laughs> Up at the top, this is uh, Jasper Balkian, who uh, actually took time out of his schedule to come and tell me about his injury in the uh, opening few days. Openly admits he isn't fully fit here. Has worked hard to even get to Pyeongchang as Jasper Bjorkian with his coach Mark. They were then separated by the Federation. So Mark is just here as a spectator. But I'm sure has spent plenty of time with his skier. And, uh, he said he wants to end his games with pride. Came to the bottom. Will be one stage higher than quite a few have so far. He's uh, in a lot of pain, apparently. But, uh, you're at the Paralympic Games. If it means enough, you can put the pain to one side. And Jasper Bartian from Belgium. We've had a run of DNFs, and he is showing his determination not to be one of those. Well done, Jasper. Well done, indeed. Through the line, the man from Machdal salutes 57-89. That will have hurt, but he won't mind just now. Now Alex is Wimor. Has a medal. Can the Canadian find another? Bronze already. The giant slalom. Is there something here in the bag that he can surprise us with? Sixteen forty one at the first split. Well behind, but different athletes have down, found different speed in different areas of this slalom course. And 4.54 is a good benchmark here. Guimont, just 18, originally from Houston. Slow through this section and 5.6 seconds back now. Oh, and it's another that hits the deck. Oh, Pyong Chang is standing for punishing at the moment. Alexis gets the DNF. He wasn't that far from the end as well, which is what's going to hurt him the most. Just sliding out there. And again, just slightly innocuous. But... Once you've lost your balance, once you've lost your line, you lose your place in the competition. So, uh, Davide Bendotti, waiting on. None of the uh, DNFs, of course, too many delays. So the competition moving steadily. Twenty-four-year-old Davide Bendotti 
of Italy then. His mother was out on the ski slopes and bumped into para-alpine skier Luca Carrera. She asked some questions about it, went home and told Davide Mendotti, and a Paralympian that day he was destined to become. Mendotti slamming through the gates. I'm sure Luca Carrara is uh, keeping an eye on his protege. 2.3 seconds back at the moment here on day eight. Just getting to the bottom really is the achievement. And Mendotti looks to do that in a time of 53.34. Acknowledges the crowd at the bottom who are very noisy here this morning whilst it's not the biggest we've had. They're certainly at a volume that's respectable. Mendotti getting down is respectable as well. Puts him in 12th position, 53.34. Gakuta Koeki. Five-year-old Japanese skier. Waits patiently. And here goes Gakuta Goeke from Okea. Now lives in Tokyo. Works in an office when he's not out on the slopes. And this is a third Paralympic Games experience. He's been inside the top ten on three different occasions. That's Goeke. We keep losing people at the rate we are. Being inside the top ten might not prove so difficult. Lost some good names as well. Stanton, no, stood firmest. His time 34.54 to this section. Kowicki isn't anywhere near that, but 8.78. I fancy that maybe some of the latter skiers are just taking it. A little slower with the knowledge of how many are going out. But Koike will finish. And will rack a time of 101.16. By far the slowest of the morning. It wasn't without problems for the three time Paralympian. They're still applauding. McCushin waits on. Nineteen-year-old neutral Paralympic athlete comes from Melisavo. Uh, Still a student studying in law. Here, hopefully, studied the course well enough to get down without a problem. Doing okay in the first half of the course. Not sure how he matches up against Jamie Stanton just yet. He's behind. So is everybody else. How much? The cushion clocks 4.60. So currently looking at around about 14th to 16th place. Could do with picking up some more time here through the bottom section. It looks quick. And it's better than last place, so 40. Three people below him for Alexei Mikushin. Debut Paralympics. Now, Hilmar Orvassen. The only Icelandic skier here. Hopes of the nation for Hilmar Rassen, another who's just 17. He uh, underwent chemotherapy for bone cancer not long after that was completed. His family went on a skiing trip. So they had some skiing lessons and it just went from there. Hasn't wanted to do anything else since then. 
This is a debut major competition. Plays golf at a fairly competitive level as well. Does uh, Gilmar. Skis for a Reykjavik club and well he's the right side of the gate so uh, at least he's had the whereabouts to get up. You can see the finish line quite clearly from that section. He will be able to hear the crowd as well. And uh, well, to a man and a woman, they are clapping and applauding Hilmar Ovarsson for just getting up and getting on with it. And isn't that a Paralympic message that we can all relate to? I'm sliding down here, but just comes to a stationary position at a gate post. So he thought, you know what? I am not done. Last 10 we go then. This is Kohei Takahashi. 17 as well. Not the youngest, 17. I mentioned it before. 16 is the youngest age here. 53 is the oldest. That was in the VI category, but the youngest is in this one. A little bit later in the program, that's Lovro Dokic from Croatia. This is going all right at the moment for Takahashi. Really stopping and sliding anywhere too seriously. He's going to be a long way behind Jamie Stanton, but he certainly took the uh, mindset of slow and steady. Doesn't win the race on this occasion, but he might just get himself a time at the end of run one. You can throw yourself into run two that way at least. Getting to the bottom of the first run gives you an opportunity to compete all day. Those ones that have fallen will watch from the stands later. Nagahashi is not one of those. He's uh, quicker than his teammate Koiki as well, but Japan are 18th and 19th respectively. That time, 60.06. Bib 49 belongs to the United States of America. In the Pyeongchang sunshine. Tyler Carter. It is a second Olympic Games for Tyler. Let's see a deal of him on the World Cup circuit. Born without a fibula in his right leg. Just one year of age, he had his limb amputated below the knee. So something that Tyler has dealt with pretty much in the first year of his life. Again, lots of good messages that come out of Paralympics. Tyler. Just getting on with it. 27th in the giant slalom in Sochi. Combined time of three minutes here in the slalom. Went to the World Championships in uh, Panorama, British Columbia, 2015. Got 14th in the slalom. He's going to cross the line a time of 102.22. Tyler gets across the line. Hey guys, hey mom, hey dad, love you guys. To his dad, says his biggest influence is his father, Ed. Well, hopefully Ed is watching on. Andorra's only representative of these games. Roger, please, Davi. Spent plenty of time in the World Cup circuit. Oh, he nearly spent very little time on this course. He's uh, slammed on the anchors and somehow managed to keep it going. So the uh, Andorran continues his day eight. Really leaping into turns. Oh, no. Well, he thinks he's within. He might be, you know. Determined here not to end his day. It carries on. Even the uh, clock had come off the screen there. I think we all anticipated that that was your lot. Uh, it isn't. He carries on. Uh, Davi 
Another that's getting a hero's welcome as he comes into side of the spectators. It banks round to the right. Once it does that, this course, you can see the athlete at the top of the hill. Oh, another slide, but another piece of control from Davi. And the 20 year old will complete the first run. Great cheer from the Junction Alpine centre crowd. Davi, it's possibly the best reception he's had in his career. It is slippy out there. You see this one here, comes to a halt. And I think 99.9% .9 of us just thought that's the end of Roger Fried Davi. How wrong were we? United States of America back at the start gate. This time it's Connor Hogan. Connor's 20 years old. Still a student. Studying business. In uh, Illinois. Went to the World Champs in 2015. Very young when he did that. And 15th in the slalom. Americans believe there's plenty of potential in this man. Need to unlock it on the world level. They're not doing badly. They've obviously already got people like Jamie Stanton and Thomas Wolf. But obviously with Jamie retiring at the end of these games, there's an open door for someone to be the best American standing skier they have. A big injury in early 2016. That hasn't helped after the early potential of those world champs in 2015. Went to ski in Vermont. Parents loved it, so why wouldn't he? And Hogan crosses the line. 102.59. Can't wait to get his helmet off. So, uh, USA have had three skiers in recent moments here in this competition. The next one, this is Spencer Wood, just 21. Another that the USA want to work with and improve, and hopefully, they'll see times that show. But that hard work going in behind the scenes is paying off. He's behind Stanton here. Big slide a moment ago. Really takes the wind out of your sails. Another that's still studying. He's uh, studying marketing at the University of Colorado. Still going. on the course so many before him haven't managed it this far Spencer Wood with just a handful of gates left that's the last that's the line Spencer Wood clocks a time of uh, 60.39 right Next up, the, uh, another of our Czech contingent here in Pyeongchang. This is Miroslav Ladinsky. 45 years old is Miroslav. A couple of world championships in terms of his skiing credentials uh, I think higher than a 13th that he got in the slalom back in 2015 already a considerable amount behind Jamie Stanton as to be expected we're into the final six athletes in the standing event
Another that's determined to make it to the bottom no matter what. Ladinsky. He was injured. Serving the Special Operations Group of the Czech military in Afghanistan. And here he is in his first Paralympics completing the slalom course. This is Julio Andres Soto Ugalde representing Chile. Another about single leg skiers. Ugalde already off balance quite heavily, caught one of the posts. A little innocuously, Soto Ugalde will be more than determined to make it to the bottom. Oh, well, he's going to try and fight back here. He has technically slid past the gate. If he can manoeuvre himself enough. Nope. Just wasn't to be for Soto Ugalde. And I'm afraid he joins the ever-growing list of DNFs. I believe he's up to 12 now. Again, just here see the sun glistening off the snow it's it means it's quite slippy and uh, he fought to try and stay within the competition did uh, Julio Andres he looks on as the rest of the competition carries on sadly for him without him Well, the youngest competitor in the competition for the men is Lovro Dokic. Lovro, a student in the uh, Sozieme club at Zagreb. That was the home of the uh, Zagreb World Cup. The Sozieme mounted to rest play so he's got something to be looking at when he's learning it's coach Luca I'm sure watching on just the use of the ski pole in the right hand for young Lovro but he's further on than many just maybe the man who's inspired by Sitski Adino Sokolovic can get to the line he can 107 it leaves him down in last position but technically he's not because of all the DNFs part of the skill of skiing is making it to the bottom yes you have to gamble yes you have to take chances but if you don't finish, you don't get a time. <laughs> Chance for Sergei Alexandrov. You see the two prosthetics being used. Alexandrov is 36 years old. Doesn't have a major competition. To his history. So this is a big moment indeed for the neutral Paralympic athlete. Only took up skiing in 2012. It was, uh, an accident whilst climbing, which was a big part of his life uh, back in 2009, severely broke both legs. And that uh, attracted frostbite as well, which resulted in that double amputation. Well, Sergei is clinging to the course a lot better than 12 others have so far. And from here on in, Alexandrov should complete, and he does 108.50.
Just short of being exactly 20 seconds back from our leader, Jamie Stanton. Now, Turkey only have one skier with us. And this is he. 48 year old Mehmet Degic. Sochi, 28th in the giant slalom, 35th in the slalom. Mehmet will want better. He uh, went to university in France, went to ski there as well. Still resides in France for much of the time. Debuted in the United States back in 2013, which led to him going to Sochi. Hasn't competed much on the circuit, tends to save it for the bigger events, and he stays within the posts. He uh, lives by the philosophy that people who want to succeed find a solution, others find excuses. No, he didn't find the excuse at that gate, did he? He found a solution, which was to trek back upwards and carry on. Well, Zekic giving us an example of fighting spirit and clocking a time of 1.16.53. And then there was one. We may have had 40. Final athlete out on course, then in run number one is Chile's Santiago Vega. Will he join the exclusive DNF club? Well, not exclusive, there's 12 of them, I suppose, but certainly won't want to. But it looks like he might. No, <laughs> stays on. Fights his way back, and again, a very respectful crowd here at Yongxian. Start to applaud. There's plenty of this course left for Santiago. And just there is the moment that his Paralympics come to an end. He tried and tried. But in the end, as it has on numerous occasions this morning, the course has won. Didn't finish the giant slalom in Sochi. Right this time it's the slalom here in Pyeongchang. He's very lucky not to get a face full of pole as well. He takes it around about the upper chest. And uh, Santiago didn't stay down for long, did he? Got up, comes back down. And, uh, I'm sure we'll see the 20 year old at another event. In the future, no stopping Jamie Stanton at the men's slalom standing event, though. He leads 48 51, but how close is this? 0 0.03 from Bauche, 0 0.18 from Gawley and Hall, who have exactly the same time. Thomas Walsh is 0.82 behind, and the rest, well, there's less than two seconds between the top eight. That could be extremely interesting. A high level of DNFs mean that as the course deteriorates through the day. There could be a chance of even more. Might be a surprise medalist or two in the men's standing event. But we need a second run to decide that. And that comes later. Men's slalom sitting run number one up next then. Thirty-one athletes will have a go at tackling. The Yonchon slalom course here on day eight. Some of them have overachieved. There's a few names in here that will consider that they have underachieved here at Pyeongchang. We'll start off with Takeshi Suzuki in a couple of moments. We go right there all the way down to Diego Primero Siguel Moreno. He is athlete number 31. Jernrit Slivnik, just 17. From Slovenia, their only competitor here. 
Big time, big moment for him. I've already spotted the former Slovenian Minister for Defence sat in the crowd. That, on the other hand, is Jesper Pedersen and it's going through the course. She asked to the right, slightly obscured, is uh, Dino Sokolovic. He would have come here with a big hope of winning medals. I'm sure his wife Barbara is watching on and wondering if he's going to come back with a big souvenir. But it is a close, close battle in the men's sitting division. It really is. Some of the best action of the World Cup campaign this season has come in the men's sitting. A few of the women's divisions have clear leaders in their fields, but uh, the men's events have seemed to have tightened up. And it only means that we get the benefit of great racing, of great action. The only sad part is this is the last time the men will go here in Pyeongchang, a penultimate day of action altogether. Well, so she was guilty of giving us a lot of injuries and here the conditions are beautiful. The course is in great shape. Who's in the best shape to take the goal? This is Takeshi Suzuki. Getting off to a high pace. And that's what he'll need to continue. 29-year-old from Fukushima. Oh, and he slides out. Well, this course is very unforgiving. We lost double figures in the men's standing. And the first out of the gate in the men's sitting is also a victim. Just catches the bottom of his outrigger. That's the device in the uh, hands of the sit skiers. Catches the bottom left-hand side. It hooks him backwards and out. Now, Jeroen Kampscher. Talk about a man. He is a man now. He's 18 years of age, but talk about a man who... Has lots of experience at a young age. He went to the World Championships as a 17-year-old last year. Came away with three golds. He was famously caught on the phone to his mum straight after the event, making sure that she knew he was all right and that he'd won a gold. He won three in the end. He was the first Dutch para-alpine skier to win a world title. Then in the super combined. To then go on and win the giant slalom and slalom. Gives you an idea that he should be somewhere near the podium in this one. Kampstra into the bottom half of the course then. The large Dutch contingent are on their feet at the bottom. He'll be able to see them. Although you would hope he's concentrating on what's in front of him. He gets the set the first time. Suzuki's failure is Kampstra's benefit. 48-4-0. That is now the time to be. Jeroen Kampscher, the golden boy with the Orange fan club. Is it another goal to match the super combined title that he already has? Now, do you know Sokolovic? Had a very interesting time in Kutai. He broke his mono ski one day. The next he went and had it fixed. He came back and won a World Cup gold. It was a very interesting couple of days. He then went off to Zagreb where they held another of the World Cups. His home country, his home city. And he uh, couldn't get the gold that he wanted. But he certainly found his way onto the podium in front of some home spectators here. He hasn't been in contention yet. Spoke to coach a couple of days ago and this obviously the final chance, but they felt that he might be in good condition for this one as well. 0.70, that's not a great deal. One mistake can cost you seven tenths of a second. Sokolovic weaving his way through. 
He's a big fellow, is Dino, using that upper body strength well to the line. 0.73, that's not a lot. There's two big boys of the competition through the line already, and already it's tight. Already this looks promising. Punches the air. And there is a face of determination for Sokolovic today. And we talk about big dogs in the yard at this competition. None bigger than this man this season. Yes, but Pedersen openly admitted at the beginning of this World Cup campaign that he was aiming for the next games, not these ones. He's already got a gold here. He's got a bronze as well. Had an awesome, awesome World Cup campaign. Can he do it again? Just 18 from Bergen in Norway. He will be in and around when it comes to the medals in this event. It's as simple as that. Born with Spina Bifida. I'll tell you what else he was born with is a huge smile, Jesper Pedersen. He has grinned his way through the World Cup with every victory that he had. He went unbeaten for something like four or five races in the opening section. He and Marie Boucher of France, they looked like they were going to uh, absolutely steamroll the competition, but uh, Camp Stewart came to life and Pedersen's made a couple of mistakes here. He's going to be quite far behind. 3.22, he'll be disappointed with that. 51.62, 3.22 back for Jesper Peterson. Well, Pedersen waves, but I think he wanted to be a lot closer. Interesting from Jesper Pedersen. Some more big guns to come then. Johan Tabale, another that had some great moments in the World Cup this year. He's 36 now, Tabale. Lives in uh, Mosin in France. He up skiing in 2001 to pursue his studies. But, uh, after an accident, he returned, and it's an accident that we talk about again here in Pyeongchang. Johan Tabale oh, just hasn't had the games he would have wanted. Patrick Francois has made it onto the podium on a couple of occasions, but Tabale has just struggled with the course, turning it and just sliding that back end out. Tail, just kind of and once the back end goes, you've only got a small window of opportunity to rescue it. And Tabale is out of the competition. It's a second DNF inside the top five already. Akira Kano of Japan. Kano. 32 from uh, Abashiri. Another that's uh, gone on to live near Nagano. The opportunity to train is not to be wasted. Uh, fluent in English. He's very wide here and well. That is the end of another of our competitors. Miss Gates are proving very costly. And you see Tabale making his way down and Akira Kano will not be far behind. Well, they weren't even halfway through the course, the pair of them, but uh, just here. And you see the head go back, the realisation that that is not the path he wanted to go. Akira Kano. He's out of the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. Well, at the moment, only three have gone across the line. So the medals really are up for contention. And Roman Rabble will feel like he can be in the mix. Rabble, 26 years old. The second games for him, he took
took away three bronze medals from Sochi. Hasn't been able to replicate that here. Big, big slide. He's 2.38 seconds back, even before he comes to the right-hander that leads down the hill. Intricate section here that leads you into that right turn. Well, he's gone further than the last few skiers that have entered the course. 35.03 for Camp Stur through this section. Another big, heavy back end slide, just using that singular ski to maneuver the course. The big mono ski, there's a suspension device below it. The bottom of the mono ski clicks onto the singular ski, a bit like a ski boot would, with bindings. Rabo, 57.43, some nine seconds back, but he is only the fourth to cross the line. Waiting to go is Jasmine Bamba. Come on, man, rip up. 38 years old. Jasmine these days. And, uh, last experience he's here in a third games. He's here representing his second nation. He to Serbia in 2010, the first ever Serbian. It's a uh, Paralympic Winter Games. Oh, Bamba's wide and gone. And another claimed by the course. I'm sure his wife and three children are looking on. They'll feel his disappointment from here. They might be a fair distance away, but they'll know exactly what's going through the heart and mind. Of Yasmin Bamba. Not someone that doesn't give his all. He is a trier, but that was a step too far on this occasion. Frederic Francois of France has medaled in these games a bronze in the Super G, a silver in the Super Combine. Can he give us? medal winning performance here and of course is only the one that sets you up but at the moment completing the course is proving an obstacle not just in the sit ski competition Francois slipping and sliding at the moment Kampsur, Sokolovic and Pinnison just not looking in danger Francois getting a little bit of a head of steam now the 41 year old snowboarder before his accident in 2001 always wanted to be on the slopes still fighting here at the bottom end of the course is Francois into the final stages it's been a while since someone's crossed the line 3.13 he's gone into third oh, little pockets of uh, battles then 0.73 separate the top two nine one hundredths of a second separate three and four already opening ourselves up to an interesting second run aren't we Japan have a fair few sit skiers this is Aiki Mori who is uh, 37 What else he is, he's quick. Started watching the 1998 Olympic Winter Games in Nagano on television whilst he was being, uh, well, whilst he was hospitalised after a motorcycle accident. And he's inside, I told you he's quick. He certainly is a man that can be in contention here, but the course is proving more difficult than the times, I think. It would be fair to say. It's now about Taiki Mori's battle with the bottom half, let alone the clock. 
Can he stay on the circuit? 1.71. There are some real big areas where you're fighting against the circuit itself. And he's dropped a whole manner of time. But Taiki Mori coming down. Will get a finish time at least. Look at the difference. Well, he was up in the early stages. No doubt about that. But this course is brutal. 51.55. Now then. We're up to six people that have crossed the line. And Kurt Oatway joined that exclusive list. He's already got an exclusive list of people he's joined. He's a gold medal winner here in Pyeongchang. That Super G gold for him means the world. Has he got one more big event in him? Oh, he's real wide. And Oatway goes. Well, we're six over the line and five fails to finish. That is not a stat we were expecting here. Just getting out of shape. And once you start sliding, it's very hard to get back. Now, Niels de Langen has been on the outside looking in it seems in this World Cup. A lot of attention, of course, for his teammate, Jeroen Kampster. Niels at just 19 himself would like a little bit of that limelight. Well, there's plenty of sunlight here in Pyeongchang. Can Niels de Langen find himself a golden performance? No, he can't. He slides out. Oh, and de Langen, who I... Uh, I saw the other day furious at the side of the course and he's ended up at the side of the course again and the head is down and you have to feel for Niels de Langen there might be some work for the coaching staff to find that confidence that he had right at the bottom of the pole is literally the worst place you can catch it that's where it's uh, screwed into the ground and if you catch the pole at the bottom it's quite unmovable really and that is exactly at the speed he was going that has thrown Niels de Langen backwards and out. Here we go, bud. Let's go, Josh. Well, a man by the name of Elliot has won gold here in the snowboarding competitions. Is there one for Josh Elliot? 36 years of age. United States of America skier from San Diego. Your wife Samantha is looking on. Oh, it's wide again. And another out. Well, what a course this is proving to be. We're up to seven. It now means more of DNF than have crossed the line. Got wide there, fighting hard, which is a a big thing of Josh Elliott. He's a real fighter, but just couldn't get it back. And another's gone. And you can see the heartache for them. Bronze medal winner from the giant slalom. This is Igor Sikorski of Poland. They go. Will fancy his chances here. With the amount of DNFs. This is another opportunity for Poland to pick up a medal at the Alpine. The mindset of the guys at the top, they'll know what's going on. They'll know about the results. There's radio communication for the top. Just 0.81 in the opening section. Needs to find a little more speed. 
27 year old from Krakow. Massive snowboarder before his accident. All he wanted to do after that was return to racing in the snow. Lucky not to get caught up in the gate there. 2.5 for the difference. You see the quick speed of his hand a moment ago to get his uh, outrigger out of the way. Well, we might just get a finish here. Sikorski coming to the bottom. Will cross the line. Go sixth. Just jumping ahead of Roman Rabel. We are even. Seven finishes, seven DNFs from 14. Where will we end up now? Tyler Walker. Here we go. Go, Walker. Come on, Tyler. Ready? He knows how to move, this guy. Tyler Walker has a silver from the giant slalom. He has a showreel all of his own for spectacular crashes, none more so than the one that I'm sure if you're into para-alpine skiing or you type it into a, an internet search engine, you'll find Tyler Walker's mammoth crash in Sochi that meant to an airlift was needed, he wasn't the only one to be there in uh, Sochi, it was uh, claimed its victims in Russia, but here Walker has been fairly faultless in his performances, he was up in time in a moment ago dropping to 0.61, we saw uh, Pedersen do this as well big slide from Walker, that won't have helped the speed you notice the aerodynamics on the front of his mono ski towards the line well he's in contention 0.68 boy do we have a competition now Kampstra Walker Sokolovic there's only 0.73 between them one mistake and your medal days are numbered but Tyler Walker puts himself in consideration once again well, Italy's Rene Di Silvestro, just 21 from uh, San Candido, took up the sport in 2015, so uh, fairly new, went to the World Championships in his home country in uh, Tarvisio at the beginning of last year, a real wide corner there from Di Silvestro. And uh, it's going to take him a lot to claw back the momentum that he's lost. He's uh, pushing it. He's got away with that bottom section of the first hill. Turning into the right side now. Down in front of the spectators he comes. 3503 was Kampstra's section. He's lost a mammoth amount of time. But we saw Tyler Walker make some up in the bottom section. If you can get quick through these, there's a chance. Di Silvestro. A DNF and a disqualification in the two slalom events in the World Championships will get across the line. 52.97. Eight for Di Silvestro. 21 year old does indeed finish. Those javelin for Italy as well in Power Athletics. Marcus Glatterhofer. Just waits for a signal. He'll be itching to get onto the course here and the timer places the gate across. Marcus Glatterhofer. Says the monoski gives me back an enormous sense of freedom. Bronze at the World Championships in the giant slalom. Didn't look like a bronze world champ during the World Cup season just gone, but he wasn't on his own to struggle through the 2017-2018 Paralpine skiing season. He's not so far behind Camp Schur, but the early section isn't the problem, it's the back. Now then, he isn't off course, and he's got himself going again, so... 
Platterhofer is able to continue. Fell during a, a motocross race in Austria in 2007 and he's fallen here. Fallen victim of a course that has claimed so many. Oh, we really will have a short afternoon session if this carries on. Kratterhofer has to rest up on the side. The crowd at the bottom have just started cheering and we are anywhere near Hang San Ming going just yet. We're still watching replays of this guy. This is Kratterhofer just getting it wrong. And uh, as he settles on the side, the para-alpine crowd here at the Zhongshan Alpine Centre wait for the legend that is Hang San Min. 38 years old now, was never ever going to miss her home games, I'm sure, but from the moment it was announced that they would be here, he knew he was going to be here too, and that, if it's the end, is unfortunate, he's managed to stay within the confines of the course, huge cheer for Hank San Min, silver medalist, it's Salt Lake City in 2002. That is why he's their hero. Oh, and it might all be over. It is. Oh, the great Hank Sandmin. His last day ends with a bit of a whimper. Will we see him again? Not so sure. We certainly have seen the last of him at the PyeongChang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. He goes right over the gatepost. And here, it just, well, he can't find the brakes, he can't find the turn, and it is a physically demanding thing to switch this mono ski from left to right constantly. And the, uh, the strength has gone. Well, that's awesome. He's at Simon Valna of Austria. And as more and more tumble, those at the top will realise there is still a chance of a medal. But only nine have finished. Rauner is just 31. Oh, and he's out as well. Went over the top. And, uh, well, he'll be hopefully come to a... A harmless resting place at some point. It flattens out in this part of the course and well, that not for the first time in this competition is down. And uh, he is out of the slalom here on day eight. Punishing. Absolutely punishing here. He just gets the gate caught up in the mono ski and uh, just spins him out. It's as simple as that. Not sure he's done any damage to the rest of the course. He gets a couple of clatters from gate posts on the way down. He'll feel those in the morning. But the man from Volders near Innsbruck has to settle for a place in the stands later on, watching the rest. Murat Peli. He's uh, a nice character, he's Murat Peli. Coming back from a broken arm sustained in this year's World Cup. Might have even been a surprise that he's here, but let's put that injury aside. Another that just seems to be jinxed at times. He's had a couple of DNFs here already. Pelly trying to stay within the course and a big wide turn there has meant that he's already at all manner of seconds behind Kampster. And you can see him getting really wide at these gates. Now there's the intricate section. He's dealing with that. Hey, OK. Well behind Kampster's time, but that might not be the main concern for Murat Pelli, I'm sure. He wants a finish time, the 35-year-old. First Paralympics. 
had a malignant tumour on his spine as a child. Led to his impairment. Pelly still going. Fighting hard with the course. He may be some 11 seconds back, but having met this man, I'll know that just getting to the bottom here is going to mean so much to him. Injury hit and DNF hit season that he's had. And again, the crowd cheering him on as he clatters his way through the final he's gates. 104.87 for Murat Pelli. He is the 10th to finish. So top which means right there. we match. 10 have finished, 10 have not. And we have 11 to go. Rock and roll, up, up. And the coach is shouting rock and roll to Thomas Nolte. Winner of the most dramatic crash during the World Cup campaign. He uh, managed to somersault over the netting. It was very innocuous and luckily he was absolutely fine. But it did make for a good showreel. Oh, he's gone very wide. He's just about managed to fight his way back through that one. And uh, once you've lost momentum and you've put every effort in just to get round one, all of a sudden, everything else afterwards becomes more painful, becomes harder. But at least he's got back up to speed. Again, maybe not in contention for the time, but at the moment, there's certainly some moral victories to be had by even getting to the bottom. And the temperature certainly scheduled to pick up. The competition here is hot with... Less than a second separating the top three. The sun is shining down. The course is proving to be a bit of a pain. Through the line comes Nolte. 59 to 0. We've got 11 across the line now. Fifty-nine twenty means he's in the top 10. Enrique Plante from Argentina. 35 years old. Lives in Buenos Aires. Took up the sport at 16. He wants to finish in the top eight. Plante has speed. He really does. But like many. It's combining it with the accuracy of staying on the course. Here's the section that's caught a fair few outs, a big wide corners. So Plante done well, better than most to get through that section. Starts to pick up his pace again. Thirty-five zero three is Kampstra's time check. Plante is running in around about last position at the moment, but uh, at the moment he's not going to be too fast. If he can get to the bottom, there's a wrath of Argentinian football shirts on the front row <laughs> cheering on. Enrique Plante, and he's inside a minute. 11th position for Plante. He's just ahead of Murat Pele. It's a second game for him. He came 19th last time. Can he better it this time around? Michi won. Another home athlete. That will be uh, greeted very noisily at the bottom. If he should get there, and already a struggle within the few gates. Polici won. The 37 year old is, uh, is 38 now, should I say, has got it back on track. He only started doing this in 2011. He's already into his 30s. 
Recommended by a friend and he just said I wanted to get on with it. Well, that's another that's claimed by the course. And Li Chi Wan rests up at the side and the flags are put away for a couple of seconds. Just here trying to get back onto his right side. Well, it wasn't helped by a, a bump as well. And uh, as he just slides backwards, the realization is that he's out. Well, the applause starts anyway at the bottom. And Mark Sawyer from Australia. So Sam Tate to come as well. 39 year old Sawyer. Another battling with the course in the very early stage. He's really not far outside of the start gate. What's that? Three gates in. And Mark Sawyer's day is done within moments. Heartbreaking. The man from Melbourne. Got caught up on the very first gate and just slides out from there. Well, that'll be tough to take for Mark Sawyer. First Paralympic Games. Five seconds counting. That is a. Uh, that is a bad way to go out in the opening section. This is Alex Cairns. He navigates the early gates a little better than some. 26-year-old from Vancouver. And he stay on course. Early section for Kampfler was 17.50. Cairns is behind. And so too is everyone else. Moving in between this section neatly. The man from Squamish, British Columbia. He's actually signed up for his very first lesson by his grandmother. Works as a ticket validation at Whistler Flatcomb Ski Resort, British Columbia. I'm sure they're all watching on and cheering at the screen. Well, he's got a lot further than most in this sitting slalom competition here on day eight. Inside a minute, yes, 59.47. It's 11th position for Alex Cairns. <laughs> Kenji Natsumi looking on. 44 years old now, Natsumi. Already a big slide in that opening section. Smashing aside gate posts as required. Natsumi, again, not competitively chasing down on camp. Oh, he's got round that one. And out. That's another that just finding the going a little too tough. And there's a few shakes of the head. Here he just tries to take this one wide and well it's took it too wide. Was never gonna get back in, couldn't find a tighter line, needed it, couldn't find it, and has to settle for being on the sidelines with the rest. Nicholas Biscayet Hudson. Now this guy is quick. This guy can go fast. This guy has a tendency of sliding out at exactly the wrong moment. So it uh, be an interesting time for Hudson. Chilean 19 year old from Rengo. 
studied at uh, civil engineering in the University in Santiago. And you see, that's not bad. Point four eight behind. Some athletes here are well over 10 seconds back outside the top 10. A top 10 finish, I would imagine, for Nicholas is uh, very much on his wish list. I only took up this sport in 2014. It's my first games, of course. So, of course, I dream of winning a medal, but there's obviously other ambitions here. Perhaps more within reach, and Biscay Hudson is outside of the leading time. How much speed can he get in this bottom section? Can he get inside a minute? Nicholas Biscay Hudson, 59.39. Mark 11th. Four more to come. Now then, Slovenia only have the one athlete in the power alpine. And here he is. Jonas Slivnik was part of a home World Cup in the turn of the year. And he was greeted like a champion from the locals there. He is just 17. He's a big. Big old time for him. He uh, lives around about 10 kilometers outside of Kranska Gorda. Oh, and he doesn't want to end his games here. Manages to get back upright. Let's ignore the times. This is not about times for somebody as young and inexperienced as Jure Slivnik. Manages to train a couple of times a week. Went to a, a youth event in Langraf and won it. The European event. So he's got something about him. Again, though, he is just 17. Traffic accident when he was aged just five. That's where his impairment comes from. Paralyzed from the waist down. That's all right, you know, 59-26. So well done to Jeremy Slivnik. There was the support for him in the stands. Three to come. Pavel Bambusik. Finished the course, Pavel is what people at the bottom are thinking. Giant Czech Republic flag just outside of our commentary booth window. Oh, and it's heartbreak. Pavel, his head looks upwards towards the sky. The moment you miss a gate, it is a gut-wrenching experience. And the 33-year-old slides back down, but he also slides out of the competition. Out goes the check. Two to come here on day eight in our first run. 26-year-old Sam Tate from Australia. Impairment are uh, spinal cord injuries. A motorcycle accident in 2013 in Wollongong. He uh, hit a car as his bike lost control. He loses control here, but just fights to stay on. And then the very next gate as well. No. One too many for Sam Tate. And the 26-year-old 
drifts out of the games. Oh, just sliding down here on the course. It means that we have just one more to come here in the first run of the men's slalom day. Big opportunity for Diego Primero. Sigel Moreno. Chilean starts as the last in the competition. He would only be the 16th of the 31 to make a finish. In fact, he is the deciding number. He finishes, more people finished than not. If he doesn't, more people didn't finish than finished. It is simple. Certainly shortened the afternoon session. The second run will not have anywhere near the amount of skiers we started with. Oh, and Moreno is down. He's going to use his strength to push himself up, but I think he's going to start sliding before he can do so. Nope. This would be an achievement from here, a real test of strength. He's going to go for it. Nope. Well, that's unfortunate. Miguel Moreno is gone from the competition like many before him. The course has had the better of the mornings, you fancy, here on day eight. And it's another DNF out there on the course. Well, the sun is certainly shining, but not for many in this competition. But how exciting is this? Kampscher, Walker, Sokolovic, just 0.73. It's quite a gap to third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth, but they're not separated by much either. So little pockets appear in our top 15. Only 15 from 31 made it through the long list of DNFs claimed both of the Korean athletes as well. Two Australians, three Japanese. Big, big disappointments for athletes who would have just wanted to get to the bottom on the first run of their last day of competition. It's the penultimate day here in Pyeongchang. It's the last day of action for the men in the para-alpine. And the course certainly was victorious this morning. Too, too difficult and slippy for a lot of our athletes as they have slid out here in the slalom competition. Men's VI competition, Miroslav Hereos is leading from Giacomo Bertagnoli. Jamie Stanton, Arthur Bauche, Mitch Gawley and Adam Hall are in a real tussle along with Thomas Walsh in the men's standing. And as we just said, the men's sitting is real tight. 0 0.73 between the top three. Make sure you join us for the second run. It's been a delight to have you with us for the first.
Well, there are plenty of big names left in this competition, but I'm certain as well there's plenty of drama left on the Jiangshan Alpine Centre course too. That's the first run of the men's slalom at Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. Thank you very much for joining us, and I'm sure you'll be back for the second run.